It's that time, so get in line. What's up, guys and gals? It's another day of Mountain Blade Warband with me, Splattercat. In this episode, I think what I'd like to do is we need to keep our eye on the periphery of Sargoth. Like, we absolutely have to watch our borders here, because I get the distinct feeling that somebody's going to be coming back at us. Now, other things we might be able to focus on, though, kind of interesting little tidbits. I want to look around, and I think in this episode, we're going to bug Vagir's a little bit further. I mean, we really, really need to go to war with Swadia, unfortunately, so I'm kind of thinking about poking the tiger there and getting myself into a little bit of trouble. I haven't had time to train up the troops, so unfortunately it is what it is. In the last episode, they gave us the town of Ambien as our new ward, so we're gonna have to keep an eye on both Sargoth and Ambien while we play through the game. Luckily for us, almost single-handedly, we wiped out just about every single Vagir Lord. Now, that did cost us. We got down to about 27 men at one point, but we won in the end. We even captured the king. We got like 30,000 dinars for selling him and another Lord back. Lots and lots of cash to be had, so we're pretty much swimming in it right now. We have 81221, or 81,221 dinars, if you wanted to say it colloquially. But anyways, let's go ahead and continue converting. In the last episode, you'll recall that I had really, really, really wanted to train up some more Nordic troops. And once we do that, I think we'll have a very nice force. So we've already got 10 horsemen right there, the 10 Mamluks. That's enough. Got a couple of sharpshooters, a couple of marksmen, a master archer... I think I could probably do a 16 right there. I think we could probably do a little bit more with our ranged troops. But we'll keep that for consideration later. I do need to move all these guys up to the front of my column, though. Nizar and the rest of them. Now, we've got so much money at this point that I do think it's probably a good idea. Let's see. The poverty is unbearable. Clearly not, because they're still here. <laughs> is that a terrible thing to say? Oh, God. Let's go ahead and let's talk to the Lord here and see if there's anything we could do to help out. I would love to have a city that just really, really likes us in the Nordic territories. Because that means I could pick up, oh, who knows. In the last place, we were able to pick up 23 to 24 units at the same time sometimes just because they liked us. So let's get working on that here. Having a town where we can get 23 to 25 tier 3 to tier 4 units from the Nordic Empire would just be an instant win button for us. They take our livestock. Okay, so we have to teach them how to defend themselves from banditos. Let's go ahead and get going with that. We've got a pretty high training skill, so it shouldn't be too difficult. It should be a very short excursion, I guess is my point. I'm going to keep a careful eye on Sargoth, though, because anytime we're occupying ourselves with one of these little side quests, somebody could sneak in and take our stuff, and we need to repulse them. So the second they show up, we're going to put on our longest trench coat. We're going to get as nasty nude as possible, like we're not going to bathe for maybe like four or five days, and then we're just going to run up and just flash them like crazy, and hopefully they will be repulsed. Or we can just go beat them up, and hopefully they will be repulsed by violence. In any case, I don't feel good about sitting around over here while the capital remains undefended. I was hoping the king would give me the capital, and so then it would become my problem. But, ooh, three of them? This is a little scary. A little scary right here. Oh, God! Oh, God! We've been beat to death! Too many beardy men. It's going to be like training didn't go so well. <laughs> it seems like they don't need training. They did a pretty good job running a train on me. I mean, honestly, if you're able to beat me up 3v1, you'll probably be fine. There's only like four bandits coming anyway. Oh my god, they're going to make me fight three again. This is not going very well for us. I don't even know what to block right there. Yep, it's just too much. The spam swinging is something that you can't do anything about with a... If I had a sword and shield, I'd probably survive that perfectly fine. But with a with a pole arm, eh, I'm not very good at, in the first place at, like, the manual blocking. And so, that's why I tend to use shields anyways, because I'm really, really bad at it. I mean, I try it. Three again, really? We are never going to get this done. And they're spreading out, too, like dicks. Ah, I got one! Don't get cocky, kid. Oh, I got two. Well, now I'm allowed to get cocky. Yeah, you guys just got whooped up. What are you going to do? Jump on your head. Mm. All right. So let's hope that we get three this time. Because if we get three this time, it's going to be really, really quick. Okay, so one of them. I don't know if it's going to happen after this. I hope not, because we've got a lot of upgrades to do. Oop. There we go. Took him out. 
I don't know why. This mouse that I'm using right now is a little bit weird with the directional swings. Oh, there's the enemy right there. So unfortunately, we're going to have to ride on in and just handle the problem up front. I've got a lot of untrained troops, though, which is putting me in a state of worryment. Which is a word that I just made up. It's like truthiness. Worryment. I think it's a word that I could... It's like merriment, but with worry. You know, I like it. Worryment. I'm going to use that from now on. Worryment is going to be my new word. Well, there's not a whole lot of people that I can make a pass at here. It's much like the bar near my home. Hopefully they continue firing at the peasants, because the peasants make really, really good targets for pain and suffering and misery. That's why they live in the middle of these little peasant villages like, Please, my lord, please help me with the bandits. Down he goes right there. In between being like chimney sweeps or whatever it is that these peasants do, I don't really know. Let's go ahead and finish him. And it looks like we've got two left over here in the corner, and this one's mine. I claim him. And so our peasants are freed. They take no notice of all of their friends that just died in that battle. They're totally okay with it. Whatever. Mathelden and Nizar got their asses whooped, but that tends to happen. And I'm going to allow them to have the items so that they just like us even more. Nobody here seems to be willing to join your party. Unfortunate. Let's go back to the village center and we'll ask them if they got another job. I can almost guarantee you that since they just got sacked a little bit ago, they're probably going to ask us to go get grain or maybe find some cows or something for them. And we will oblige both of those requests because first and foremost, I always wanted to be a cowboy. And second and second most, we really want the reputation so that we can manipulate them into fighting for us. They want us to get some seed. And while there's a joke in there somewhere about giving them my seed, I suppose I'm going to walk away from it because it's a little coarse. It's a little coarse for the content that I try to maintain here. I mean, lately I feel like I've gotten a little bit lazy with it. I mean, I have been making jokes of like, not like a dirtier nature, but I mean, I've been a little bit more loose-lipped, so I suppose I've been sinking them ships. But anyways, oh good, they're up to 49 now. I would like that number to be in the hundreds, though, in all honesty. Let's go talk to Sargoth and see what they've got with regards to grain. They've got a couple packs. I didn't read how many they wanted, though, so let me look. They want, oh, they wanted five packs. Okay, that'll work. I thought I, I started that. You might notice that the intonation of my voice right there was a little bit off. That's because I thought it said they wanted grain. I was like, oh, they wanted grain, but then I caught myself mid-sentence, and so I was like, oh, they wanted five packs. And so that's one of those side effects of LPing. After a while, you catch yourself like mid-sentence. It's the strangest thing, and you're able to just addend your thought process in motion, which is a very, very strange way to go about life. I mean, what else can I say about it? They've got butter right there. I don't need any butter right now. We do need two more packs of grain, though, before all of our idiot soldiers eat them. Because that's what they tend to do. And they've already gotten started on one of the packs. Well then, let's go to Hellbeggy. Maybe they'll have something for us. They've got fish. The fish are cheap, though, so I'll buy them. Let's go to Tyr, then, and I can guarantee we'll find it there. So it's fine. Tyr. Oh, good. They only have... One, but we have four. I thought I had three, but maybe the other one's left over? Weird. Let's run these back before we eat them all up. And then we'll take a ride through our village center. I am really happy that this village has a bridge. You'll see why later. If we ever end up trying to defend this place, that bridge makes your life a lot easier. I've done ridiculous defenses against raiding using that little bridge. And I say that because for some reason Nords always seems to give me Ambien. I don't know if it's on a list somewhere in the game's files, but Ambien is one of those towns that I always end up with whenever I play Nords. Here's the five packs, and so they should be a little bit happier now. And they don't need anything else to be done for them. Let's jump back out. Now they're cooperative, so they're up at 20. I'm not going to spend my time... I think maybe I'll go with... Does the Watchtower do it, or does it increase... I think I'm going to go with the messenger post first because we've got the money for it. Just so I know when it's being raided, but I'm not going to do anything other than maybe like the messenger post and the school so that they like me better over time. And once they like me a whole lot, because that's all I really care about in life. Mad Dog McGriddle, she's a sensitive soul. I mean, she didn't have a whole lot of friends when she was going through life. And so now she really just wants Cal Reddy to love her. And if they won't love her, then let them eat cake and she'll slaughter them all. And that's exactly how it'll play out. I like to get into character when I play here. Mad Dog McGriddle strikes me as the kind of individual that'll lay you low if she has to. And not in the good way. In the really, really bad way that's below dirt and underneath a large headstone. Or maybe not even a headstone. You might not be rich enough to have a headstone. You might just get, like, one of those little sticks that they put the shape like a cross. Anyways, let's go back for Matheld. 
And Mathild, what was she doing for me right now? I think she's just a battle monger, just like everybody else. So we'll go ahead and continue to give her the bully manga skills that she requires. So there we are. A little bit more iron flesh because 59 HP is a really nice thing to have once you think about it. I forgot to give her any skills. Let's give her a couple of those. I should probably give her crossbow skills or something though in the future. But that's beside the point. Also known as the edge if you're talking about swords. And I don't know if that one was worth saying. I think that one was one of those toothache type diatribes. We've got Telrog. Oh good, we took Telrog. That's nice. I don't know if we had Telrog before if I'm just not remember remembering properly. Ismeral is a good idea, but for now, I think we need to lay off Vagirs. And in the next episode, we're going to sacrifice Pro... I mean, in the next episode, in the next little bit, I'll sacrifice Proven if I need to, but we're going to try and take Tyr, Vercheg, Alberk, Helbeggy, Ryablet, Durchios, Kelredden, and Tilbout in the next battle with them. Ravodden might be a good idea, though. Let's ride out to Ravodden and see if that's going to be worth taking. Maybe Kura, too. Well, Commander, at last I found you, I've been out spreading the word about your claim. Good. And so we get right to rule. Oh, we're full up. Damn it. Why did I do something so stupid? Well then, let's disband him, and then we'll have to track down Lazalit in the future. We'll keep an eye out for him when we go about the taverns. He's probably around here somewhere. Kura, what do you have for us? 336, 156 marksmen, 52 knights, and a lot of guards. So that's going to be a tough place to knock over him. Definitely a cup that will take a bit of time to tip. Over here, we've got 358, which is looking no more pleasant. That place is looking like it'll just leave you as a pincushion. Largely punctured, perforated, and otherwise P-worded. There we go. So we'll welcome him back. He's now in our group, and I think it's going to put him in a weird spot in my... Yeah, we got to put him back up towards the top of this whole thing. So there it is. He's back up in the top of this. Now then, what is his writing skill? I feel like I should buy horses for everybody. A writing skill of four. So he's ready for a horse that is armored. So let's go ahead and head down to the cavalry territories. And once we've got ourselves a new horse for maybe him and Mathel, I don't know what Mathel's writing skill is at the moment, but we'll try and get her something too. So let's buy one horse. And we can get a charger. I think these chargers are really, really good by comparison to everything else. So 58 armor, 40 speed... Maneuvering's good. Charge is 32. So yeah, let's buy two of those bad boys. I'm going to have one for myself, and we'll pass that horse on. We will pass the savings on to someone else in our group. We also need to buy some food. So we'll get some bread, we'll get some grain, we'll get some fruit. We don't need chicken or anything, though. Spending a bit of cash right now. So let's give Lazalit. He's going to be one of our frontline battlefield commanders. So we'll give him a charger. There we are. Just to denote that he's done his good works for us. And then we're also going to swap his group on over to Cavalry for now. So there it is. Mathel, we're going to do something similar. Does she have four riding? She does indeedy. So let's give her our old horse. There it is. We've got a couple of extra horses around. We're going to swap her over to Cavalry so that she can ride around with us and be our vanguard while we're on the field. They're going to be our squires, as you were. And then for the remainder of everybody else, I think if we could find the king... We could probably take out Radagir or Ismarala, give ourselves a little bit of extra land to play with. And if we can get out there first, we can siege it personally and then ask for it to be given to us. So whoever gets there first, if you don't know how that system works, if you send a bunch of lords off to siege a location, whoever gets there first is the guy that gets the honors of requesting it given to him. Just so you know, so that you're not surprised when it gets given to the guy that started the fight every single time. Nord recruits, we got a couple more footmen in here, five more warriors. A Serenade Guard ready to roll. A few trained footmen, which will be nice. We'll move them up to the top of the list so that they're on the front lines with everybody else. We'll also move the Warriors up similarly. So there it is. We've actually got a front line right now, which is one of those things that you take for granted until you don't have one. I hired these Mercenary Cavalry in between episodes, so if you hadn't seen them, that's where they came from. They are top tier, so they're basically the Mamluks of mercenaries. We'll put them at the top of the list, too. And everything's looking pretty fine for our little group of soldiers. Let's go find somebody to fight with, because I get the distinct feeling that our morale may be falling off in the next little bit. Oh, good. Ambien's prosperity went up a tiny bit. That's nice. Viajeg has been given to King Ragnar. No surprise there. The king does like to give himself a lot of land. But then again, he's got a lot of troops to pay, so it comes with the territory. Which is not a pun that I meant to take, but, you know, it comes with the territory. He just gave himself a territory. Whatever. <laughs> just do our Cavity the Clown laugh right there. 
which was a character a friend of mine invented way back in the day, Cavity Clown, who rides around seducing children with a thought of candy and then being creepy. He's a lot like the guy from It. Let's go over and, or Sweet Tooth, I think was who it was based off of from, well, whatever. Let's go ahead and fight with this caravan. Because we need the morale, and that's a reasonably large group, so we might get a nice little turnout from it, like maybe five or six morale. And if we're really lucky, we'll get ourselves some nice goodies from the battle. I do like this horse better. It doesn't feel like it's any faster, but at the same time, he's much better armored. So I feel like he's going to work out for us. Which there's like a gym joke in there somewhere, but you know. Sometimes I get a little bit bored of the bad jokes, and I feel the need to just kind of censor myself from saying them, because... I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm hurting your teeth as well. We've knocked out a guy here, which means we haven't wasted our time in this battle. We've knocked out two guys. Three guys. Four. Ah, ah, ah. Five. Five enemies. Oh, no. Four enemies. Never mind. That guy looks juicy, so I'm going to pop him. I'm going to pop him like crazy. Blood splattering everywhere. The uh, field looks like it's been routed already, which is good. I didn't want this battle to take too long. I mean, I wanted to track down another lord and then slap him upside the head just for being who he is. I've heard that a lot of the other lords in the kingdom are not the nicest guys, and so beating them up has been my sincerest pleasure. Some of them are honorable, and, you know, sometimes I shoot around the battlefield like Scarface. Sometimes I kill people in the line of combat who may be honorable, but that's a price I'm willing to pay to get rid of all the bad guys, so you gotta do what you gotta do. We get five morale. That's what I was hoping for from there. We'll capture some of these caravan guards, even though they're no good. On this side of the field, we could get ourselves some new units, but I think I'm just going to let them go free. Whatever. A lordly nasal helmet. It's a helmet that likes to talk like this. Or at least causes you to do so. I wonder if it was named like that because it has the nose guard, or if it pressed down on your nose so hard that it did make everybody talk like that. That would be one of those humorous things that you never hear about. I bet it's more the former than the latter. I bet that's what it is. Let's take all of their loot, and then we shall take it away with us, and we shall sell it elsewhere. We get 2,100 dinars for Kavl, so we're going to take that. And there's some pretty big groups of Sea Raiders down and in here, so I'm going to fight with them too. Because they're worth a lot of money, and we can carry around a lot of these little guys with us. While we ride across the entire field, I'm going to put my archers out, like maybe right there. And then everybody else is just going to crash into their front lines. I don't think that the horses of your named companions can be lamed, although I've never tested the theory. So that's something I might learn over the course of this LP. It's weird how you don't pay attention to stuff until you have the thread of angry comments down below. It is very, very strange. Like, I do pay attention to the stuff that I do in this game now. Which before I never did... Ally Cavalry. Ally Cavalry. We've had this discussion already. My feelings about Ally Cavalry. Now then... That guy managed to get a shield up, although I don't think it was really meant for us. I don't think we're knocking anybody out right now either, so the chances of us, of us getting a large group of captives is probably pretty low. Then again, it looked like there were just dozens of these guys running around everywhere up here in the north, so we might have a wonderful gay little time running around annihilating these guys, making the sunshine and all that good stuff. I just finished Bioshock Infinite, by the way, which is why I would use the word gay right there. I think Bioshock Infinite tried to take it back. I don't know if it was successful, but Columbia's gayest quartet was definitely entertaining. I enjoyed the experience. Their gaiety made me feel gay. So, there it is. Let's win the battle there. And we got 14 wounded, so never mind. We are going to take some captives. That's going to be nice. There's some farmers in here and some peasant women, but I think I'm going to leave them alone because there's nobody that I want to disband in order to take them on. We'll take all of those goodies, and then we'll find the next group of banditos to occupy our time, unless there are no large groups up and in here. There's a 40 right there, and if you know anything about Splattercat, there's nothing he enjoys more than a nice frosty 40. But, I believe we're just going to walk away, whatever. Jerb. Jerb Castle looks like it could be a nice target for attack. Let's handle our updates, though, to all of our troop equipment and all of our troops. Because I do feel as though sometimes I neglect it. So we've got the Warriors, they're definitely coming along. They're almost ready to come out and play. Veteran fighter right there. I'll make him into a horseman so that we can turn him into a Serenid Mamluk because I feel like I'm a little bit low on cavalry right now. We do have a Lancer and we've got like 10 Mamluks up here and 7 cavalry, but having a nice revenue 
or a nice retinue. I got the wrong word right there. I swapped a T for a V. Having a nice retinue of cavalry to go along with the remainder of your forces is always a nice thing. Oh, is there like a, what's going on over here, guys? Is there a campaign that I was never summoned for? Well then, I don't mind if I do. I'm going to come right along with you. Where are we headed? Eh? Eh? Anywheres? I suppose that was just a little powwow to hang out and discuss the local doings. Like at the beginning when you work at Best Buy or any other big box retailer, every morning before they open up the doors, they have you get into these little huddles where they essentially talk about nothing. Like they spit out a bunch of revenues that nobody cares about, and then they talk about how great the day is going to be, even though you know deep down you're probably just going to get yelled at all day. So it's kind of a pep talk. They hope to get you through the day. By the way, don't work at Best Buy. It sucks. Let's go ahead and fight with this guy, and I can say that because I don't even work for Best Buy anymore, so I can just trash talk him all day long. Better him than me. We just murdered theirs, and I've, I've heard people say that it's not classy to trash talk your ex-employers, but you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. Like, I say Blockbuster was great to work for. I worked for a Blockbuster video for a while, and as a cinephile, that was the best job I ever had. If you ever watched the movie Clerks, it was like that. We pretty much just messed around, ate food, and did nothing all day. It was a really, really great job. By contrast, working at Best Buy was a drama-filled experience in which you get fired for no reason just because one of the managers decides that he wants to move up to your job and hide stuff in your locker. And there you go. We've killed off a guy, we've hired ourselves a new group of individuals, we've sold off a bunch of people and made a bunch of money off their heads, off the sweat of their furry little brows. We're up to 119 right here. It's almost self-defensible at the moment. But not quite there. We could definitely use a bigger group of Huskarls to guard that place. Let's move on, and we're going to keep an eye out for any Vagirs that might be running throughout our territory. And if we see them, we are going to stab them right in the... Is that being looted right there as we speak? What happened? Oh no! It got looted, and that means we're up next. So let's jump in, and we're going to handle this fight. And this may be the last thing we do in this episode, depending on how long this takes. Let's get on up in here, and we will stab them right in their clavicles. I was trying to think of, like, a funny, like, they say that the funniest words, when you're learning comedy and you're learning to write jokes, they say that the funny words always start with K's, and I was trying to think of something that started with a K, and clavicle starts with a C, and it's the best that I could do. Your coccyx. There we go. That's a word with humorous potential. This looks like a serenid force. A serenid noob force, if I was to be more specific about what we're up against. They do have some master archers, so we want to be careful about their ability to hit us with pointy objects suspended through the air by potential energy. But then again, I guess kinetic energy. I don't know. I already graduated from physics class. Leave me alone. I guess potential is in the string until you let it go. And then it's kinetic. So it's kinetic energy that's propelling the arrow, maybe. Don't tell my physics professor. He's going to be very, very angry with me if you ever found out that I was messing up something so simple. You guys will correct me down in the comments anyways, so I don't know what I'm talking about. I can say wrong stuff like all day long, and then you guys always just give me the correct answers. It's the greatest thing ever. It's like going to college with your best friend sitting next to you. It's just like, hey, dude, what'd you get for number 12? There it is. Battle 1. No casualties. That's nice. Dirajun, we yield. We're going to let him go. Because in this case, we need to start accumulating some honor, and that's what happens when you let people go after battles. It resets their troop allotment, but you do get a little bit of honor, and we're going to try and make ourselves more honorable from here on out. Got a bit of time left on our hands, so I suppose we're not going to break off the episode just yet. Continue converting some of these guys over, though. I would love to get into Mamluk territory with the huge abundance of our force being what it is. Having them be top tier is way better than having them be low tier. Ismarala. I'm going to send people to Ismarala. We're going to future-proof. Maybe in the next episode we'll wipe that out. We're doing a pretty good job at recovering our territory here. We've gotten a couple of capitals. Most, I think the place that I put it where, like, the little banner that I would like to place that declares whether or not your faction is doing average is whether or not you have three capitals on your side. Are there a bunch of men in here? Oh, there are. This place is just full of men, and so you'll know Mad Dog McGriddle is headed to that place. Let's see if we can talk to some people here and send them off to take Ismarala. So we're going to join the feast. And if we can send all three of these guys to take Ismarala, it'll probably work out for us. That'll give us roughly three times the force that's guarding the place. Lady Catelli, we've got Dashwall here. Well, we'll wait on it. Let's wait on it. Let's go back down. I'm not going to siege anything in this episode because I feel like it's going to set us up a little oddly. I think this is probably a good place to break off the episode. Yeah, I have cold feet about breaking off episodes sometimes because I'm having so much fun, but you know, all good things must come to an end. 
I guess we'll just say that I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody. My name is Splattercat. If you're enjoying the series, don't forget to like down below. It does help me in the search rankings. If you've ever heard LPers like beg for likes or whatever, it's one of those things that I really don't like to do. But every now and again, no pun intended, every now and again, I just throw it into a video randomly and I'm like, hey, but I try to give you the reason why too, because it helps us in the search rankings, which helps more people come into the fold of the Nerd Castle, which gives us better conversations, it gives us more people to interject with game ideas, it helps me come up, I mean, 90% of the games that I end up playing on the channel were suggested by somebody, so... There it is. Kind of limits the amount of work that I have to do doing research, so it's a little bit self-serving, but whatever. See you guys next time, and take care out there.